On today's video, we're gonna be talking about compression, compressing the drums, using sidechain compression, uh, and a bunch of cool stuff. So let's get to it. Hi guys, Orlando here with the Licha Record Studio on video three, part three of this mini series we're creating on how to mix an EDM song for you guys. If you missed the previous two videos, I'm gonna be linking that someplace in the screen so you can click on it and watch it. In any case, uh, go ahead and watch those videos and come back. And guys, if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing, you know the drill. Hit like, hit subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss future videos. Go ahead and do that right now. And on today's video, we're gonna be talking about compression, how to compress the drums, how to compress your bass, how to compress the synths, uh, when do you need it, when you don't need a compression, all that. So let's jump right to it. And we're inside Cubase, guys. Uh, thank you for joining us so far on this song, on how to mix this song. In video three, here we are, compressioned. And I know there's a lot, lot to cover. Uh, we're going to try to be as brief as possible because I don't want to go too extensive on it. I'm just going to explain what we did, uh, generally speaking, for compression. And um, I'm very simplistic. I, I just want to try to get the best sound, uh, do the least movements possible, and um, get it sound the way I like, um, and don't overcomplicate the mix. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to see the, the few moves we did with compression, uh, what tools we use. And uh, let's first uh, go ahead and do a before and after so you can hear uh, all the improvement that we have made until this point, all the things that uh, are piling up and how the song is coming out before. I'm going to remove all the effects right now before. Here it is. And after. Huge improvement. Uh, all the tracks are more present. Uh, everything is more balanced. Um, we gain a few dBs in, in volume, of course, with all the processing but uh, uh, not too concerned about that. We're going to address that as well. Uh, we don't want to go too loud uh, on the mix. I like to leave at least 6 dB of um, uh, headroom, actually, uh, for the mastering process uh, afterwards. So in any case, let's see what we did here really quick. And I'm going to start with the, with the kick. So... If you remember, uh, we were using the CLA mix hop and uh, we did EQ. And uh, for this one, really quick, I didn't do any compression on it, but you have a compressor there that you can use. I uh, just wanted to, to let you know about that. You can just go ahead and, and um, do a little bit of compression there as well. But in this case, we didn't do that um, for the snare actually let me put here dynamics for the snare we did use a little bit of compression with the uh, section here for dynamics there's actually two um, flavors let's say um, the desk uh, compression here and a bluey uh, compressor on this plugin I ended up using the bluey uh, with a ratio about two uh, two three ratio and actually what it's doing is this. I'm gonna just play that. It's just uh, 
doing about 3 dB gain reduction there in the snare. Uh, just really quick before. <laughs> It's just compressing a little bit more the snare just uh, to keep it consistent. It sounds just a little bit more uh, consistent and um, there's a tiny little bit more body uh, to it. I uh, hope you guys could listen to that. Just a tiny bit of uh, uh, dynamics there just to control the snare. We also did a little bit of dynamics with this on the synth bass. Uh, let me take a look here. Where is that synth bass? I'm gonna go here to the uh, to the verse really quick so you can um, hear that as well. So I just turn it down a little bit, um, but. Um, uh, basically, just, you know, about 6 dB gain reduction on that. Uh, let's take a listen one more time before. Just to control a little bit more the dynamics on the synth bass there. Uh, ratio, like, 2... Two nine and um, again, uh, fast uh, fast release there because uh, we don't want to lose those transients. So uh, fast release there. Besides, the the bass is pretty pretty fast moving. If it's just one note, we'd probably use a slow release. Uh, but since it's a faster um, faster type of rhythm on the synth bass. Just want to do a little bit of a faster release on that. With this one, that's pretty much it. Only the hi hat, hi hat and snare track, and the synth bass. We we use the the dynamics on that, the compressor on the CLA mix hop. Um, moving on to to uh, the next thing here on the hi hat and snare. We also use this plugin from SoundSpot. Uh, it's called Paradox, and this is two plugins in one. Basically, it's a it's an equalizer and a compressor, so it has uh, the two of them. Uh, and I use a um, a preset that it's a snare punch, and uh, that comes with a uh, with a plugin when I got it. Um, these are pretty, pretty, pretty cheap, inexpensive plugins, guys. Uh, from from SoundSpot, just check them out. Controlling a little bit more the dynamics on this, it's not doing much. I'm gonna show you what it's doing actually, uh, before and after before. <laughs> So it's just controlling the peaks a little bit. Maybe we can pull it down a little bit more. Okay, and you can see it right here, um, controlling the dynamics right here, just a tiny little bit. And um, that's pretty much it for the hi-hat and uh, snare track the next thing we did actually for all the drums was uh on the virtual mix rack we use this plugin the fu stress from slay digital this is an amazing compressor and we're just again controlling a little bit more the dynamics on that we use a preset that's called kick punchy and tight uh, on that one and uh just adjust it a little bit uh, I'm gonna mute this one and uh, before and after. Yeah. 
just a tiny little bit there. It's not too much. It's just controlling a little bit more the dynamics. After that, I use uh, another compressor from Slate. Basically, with this one, I selected also preset, adjusted from there as well. It's the preset called the EDM Drum Bus. And uh, for this one, uh, let's take a listen here what it's doing. <laughs> Controlling a little bit more the dynamics as well. About 3 dB of gain reduction there. Fast attack, fast release. I actually have it like in 50%. So it's doing a little bit of parallel compression there. It's leaving 50% of the signal on touch. And it's giving it 50% of that gain reduction. So it's doing a little bit of parallel compression already in here. The next thing on this uh, drum bus, I put uh, the Waves uh, C6, uh, which is a multi-band compressor. Uh, this thing right here is just controlling the full drum set and controlling specific frequencies. Before and after, really quick, what that's doing in the track. <laughs> So you saw that um, the drums are actually more upfront, feel more in your face. It's more control. It's controlling a bunch of the dynamics here. It's controlling the high-end frequencies there. You control certain frequencies uh, individually, so you get a more punchy sound, especially for drums. That's the end goal. I'm just removing here on these frequencies on around uh 2.2k i'm i'm reducing a little bit um the, the volume of that frequency there <laughs> So it sounds, it sounds better, uh, okay? So you need to work with this. Made the drum set come a little bit more forward in the mix. That's what we did. Next thing we did here was actually using parallel compression here on this uh, group that it's a uh, drum parallel, actually, uh, before and after, before I uh, even sh show you what it's there really quick before. <laughs> What we did here using this uh, plugin, which I love, and it's free on top of that, which is crazy. From Slate Digital, the Monster Stream Dynamic Processor, this thing is crazy. Just use a preset here that is called Drum Exciter. Just leave it like that. I didn't even touch it because this is, this is going to be parallel compression, just a tiny bit of that. Uh, what we did afterwards was using this um, compressor with a ratio of 20. We're really crushing it right here and just going crazy with it. It's doing like almost 20 dB of gain reduction on that. Uh, it's crazy. We're just crashing the whole thing. Super fast attack, super fast release. Actually, I don't think I, I used this one afterwards. I was trying to see one of the other, actually. I ended up just using this one. But uh, you can do the same with the Distressor. For now, I just want you to uh, grab the main concept, which is I'm just using a tiny little bit. I mix it with the original sound around here just giving it a little bit more um and i'm gonna do that right now so you can see it and what it's doing to the whole drum set actually so Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, my process with this is really simple. Just pull it up until you can really hear it and just pull it down a little bit after that. Just pull it down a little bit so to be a little bit more conservative with this. And as you heard that, um, it's just giving it more body to the sound of the full drums. That's parallel compression there. Um, sub bass, this is really important. Um, here, I'm gonna actually gonna solo the kick and the sub bass really quick. I'm gonna teach you what I did. Okay, so for this one, really, really quick, what I did here with this uh, sub bass was basically using a compressor uh, and sidechain the um, kick with this sub bass. Main idea here, before, So every time the kick hits, uh, the sub bass is going to go down in sound. It's going to lower the volume. That sidechain compression, basically, as you can see here, the input is the kick. And um, what it's doing is just uh, sending, every time the kick hits, it's sending a signal to this compressor to say, hey, dude, just control that sub bass. Main thing here is just fast attack. You can play with the release. Uh, the release can give you a nice feeling. In this case, we ended up um, doing like almost 16 dB of gain reduction. So every time that kick hits, that sub bass going down, it's gonna dock. There's actually a video I did on sidechain compression. You can check that out. I'm gonna leave a link uh, as well to that um, to that video. And uh, what else do we have here also on the bass, on the group track bass here? We do have a little bit more compression going on. I'm controlling a little bit more all the bass, actually, all the bass sounds that are going in um, are going actually to this, um, to this bass group track. And I'm controlling that a little bit more. Um, controlling the dynamics a little bit more with this, uh, the FG401. It's a BCA compressor. And let's hear that really quick here. So three to five dB of gain reduction there, kind of a medium, medium uh, attack and release. I'm getting used actually a little bit more faster than that because there's pretty fast bass uh, notes there as well. So. Uh, just a tiny little bit more on the uh, makeup gain just to um, uh, regain a few of those dbs that we lost there um and um moving on to uh the synth actually i don't think i did compression on the synth actually i don't need to i didn't feel the need to do compression you don't need to do compression on every track so I didn't do any compression on those synths, which is um, 
pretty good. I mean, I just like the sound of them. If there's nothing that bothers you about the synths and they're sounding good, let them be. Don't stress over that. And uh, just to make sure, yeah, there's nothing there. <laughs> so there you go. Um, you can you can definitely use some compression, um, but it's it's up to you guys as well. Um, moving on, also that's on the individual tracks, I believe. Uh, that's pretty much it on the vocals. I uh, since I um, send all the vocals, I'm not doing any compression on the individual tracks there for the vocals. I am doing actually this, the PSP Novel Q. This is a passive EQ, and I use a preset called Box 3. And what it's doing actually is just boosting uh, frequencies there on 8 uh, kilohertz, um, doing a bit of, bit of uh, width actually on that plugin, and just a tiny bit of 40K. Um, boost there as well which is crazy 40k you can barely hear that but believe me it does something to the sound that uh, sounds just better on the lower end of that uh, there's a high pass filter there of 80 hertz and there's a shelf there um, attenuating actually around I don't know 80 90 uh, hertz there and um, that's about it for that equalizer. After that, it's actually going to do a little bit more compression. Oh, before that, virtual on the virtual mix uh, mix rack, I did compression there a tiny bit just to control as well. Let's hear that really, really quick um, on the chorus. So before. <laughs> So about, you know, between 1 and 3 dB of gain reduction there, uh, not doing much. Just controlling a little bit more the dynamics. Fast release because there's a few things that are very rhythmic and fast there on the vocals that I want to control, but I, I don't want to lose uh, transients on those. So fast release, kind of medium attack uh, there on the vocals just to control a little bit more. That and... Uh, what else? What else? What else? Um, besides that, this guy here from Waves, just love this thing, the CLA 2A. This is a uh, awesome compressor. It's only two knobs, gain and peak reduction. And uh, before. So you heard that um, up to 5 dB of gain reduction there. Uh, also controlling the dynamics on the vocals. Uh, just one tip here on all these plugins, when you see analog, just turn that thing off because that's just noise. It's just senseless noise. I don't want noise on that, uh, especially not on EDM. Um, not trying to go too um, vintage with this. Turn that off. And uh, that's pretty much it with that. And after that, I did use the um, Fairchild uh, style compressor uh, by Fabrice Gabriel. This thing sounds amazing. And again, with this, really, really conservative here with the sound of this. <laughs> Not even 3 dB uh, of gain reduction there, just, this is just to give it another flavor. Before. It's 
just makes those vocals sound better. Hope you can hear the difference there. That's all for the vocals. The vocal synth is the main instrument. I just want it to sound uh, the best that it can for this type of track. Moving on, um, on all music, I'm not doing compression because I'm I'm actually doing general compressor there in the submaster. I'm gonna teach you what I'm actually doing over there. But um, here, since last video. Um, I think I forgot to show you this, but here's a cool trick that you can do, and it's for vocals. This uh, F6 from uh, Waves, this is a dynamic equalizer. And uh, I just have this band activated here, number four, on 1.8 kilohertz, I believe. Uh, you can go higher than that, depending on the vocals that you have. This plugin, I have it set it up on all music. Here's the thing. I have all my vocals here. I have all the music here. You're going to put this one on all your music, all the instruments besides the vocals. And what I did was side chaining that to all vocals. So all vocals are sending a signal here to this EQ and it's uh, saying, you know what, every time the vocals sound, you're gonna on that frequency just dip a little bit and create a space on all the music for the vocals on that frequency. And that's gonna make your vocals sit on top of the mix every time. And this works for any genre. This is a pretty cool trick. I think I got this one from Dave Arlington. Um, I believe there there's a tutorial about this, and it's uh, I, I'm, I've been using it since then because it's it's just pretty amazing. And uh, really quick, what it's what that's doing because I wanted to show you I couldn't show you in the uh, previous video, and I uh, really wanted to show you about this. Here it is. <laughs> Right there, I'm just gonna leave it right there. Just controlling the mids, doing a, a creating a space in the uh, in the mid uh, range there for the vocals. Actually, just pretty cool. It makes uh, them sit on top of the mix. Um, that's about it for that. Um, I didn't use compression here on all music. Uh, then I do use compression on my mix boss or sub master. You need to be careful, though. You don't want to overdo it. There's people who don't do it at all. I don't, I'm don't. i not saying that you need to do it, but uh, it's pretty cool. It glues all the tracks together just a tiny little bit. And my uh, settings here are pretty simple. I'm just using super fast release there. Attack, I'm just going uh, here on 30 milliseconds on this, uh, the SSL. This is an SSL G Master bus compressor. Um, on this one, two to one ratio. Um, Raid, uh, just one there, just leave it there. That's the original setup before that. But what you want to do is uh, you want to move the threshold until you get about one dB of uh, gain reduction there. And here's what it sounds like before. You heard the difference there, just one dB, uh, but again, it's just grabbing all the tracks and 
glue them together, sounds more consistent. That's what I'm doing there. And I'm doing something similar just after that with another instance of the uh, Fairchild style of compressor. Again, with this one, similar concept. I'm just using, I don't know, 1 dB gain reduction there. I'm not even boosting, uh, I'm not even pulling the output gain at all. I'm just leaving it there at zero. Before, I don't know. This is magic. It's 1DB. There's a preset actually that's called glue. Uh, that's the one I use. You can do this one, glue um, high pass, which is pretty cool as well. I'm just going to put this one to zero as well. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And what that's doing, it's just um, below 148 hertz. It's not listening to the bass, which is pretty good because the bass takes a lot of energy and sometimes you're not compressing uh, how you like with the with the bass. Uh, so that it's leaving, it's not even listening to the to the kick, um, but it's listening to the rest of the, of the tracks and just glue them together. I'm just gonna leave that there. Um, again, just be conservative and just want to be gain reduction. And I'm not even pulling the output gain. I'm just leaving it as it is. So that's pretty much compression for this whole song. I just want you to listen to the whole thing uh, one more time. All the effects, all that we have done so far for all those tracks. EQ and compression before and after really quick. And after. That's pretty much it, guys, for this video today. Hope you like it. Do um, you know the drill? Just hit like, hit subscribe, hit the bell. I don't want you to miss next videos. Uh, we're going to finish this whole song. And um, um, in future videos, I'm going to teach you just how to release it, actually. We're going to do a release. And we're going to do a, a quick mastering setup as well. I don't want you to miss any videos uh, from us. Um, I wanted to bring you as much as value as uh, I can. So if you have any questions regarding this tutorial today, leave a comment below. Let me know. I want to answer. I want to help you get these results on your home studios with your own plugins. And um, that's it for today's video. And guys, Thank you so much for watching this video. Please go ahead and hit like, hit subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss any videos uh, from us. And on next video, we're going to be talking about effects, reverb, delays, all the good stuff. I don't want you to miss that. And guys, don't stress. Do your best. Be blessed. Forget the rest. And see you in the next video.